So, David, could you tell me a story? Um, what happened to your dad? Uh, so, my dad basically uh, went to, for a routine dentist appointment uh, back in uh, just before the lockdown. Um, and then um, they, they noticed that he had some white spots on the roof of his mouth and the side of his mouth, um, which they were a little bit concerned about. So, um, he went for uh, various different biopsies and, and treatment, uh, only to discover at the very beginning of lockdown that he had mouth cancer, um, which uh, involved um, a series of radiotherapy. Um, and 18 months of being fed via a tube um, because he, he couldn't obviously eat um, f- through his mouth. Um, he then uh, went for a course of chemotherapy, but um, that sadly uh, didn't work and, and he, he passed away this August. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, are, how are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. I, I think, you know, uh, you know, it's just nice to be able to sort of share that story and keep his memory going. Um, it was, you know, an 18 months fight for him and he was so positive um, and he loved, uh, you know, just making people you know, smile all the time. And, and just even though he was sort of suffering, he, he still kept going. Um, and I think, you know, um, it's just nice to sort of keep going, really. Yeah, and and this loss has inspired you to try and raise a bit of awareness about mouth cancer, and which isn't at the highest level it could be at the moment. What can be done to improve the awareness? I think you know there's a, there's a simple two minute check that you can do, um, and you know if we'd known about this, you know we never knew about this before, and, and it's just a very quick and simple check that you can do at, at home. You know it's um, you know it's, it's just a, a wipe round of your mouth and look at your mouth and, and just it makes it can make a difference. It could save your life. And we've also got Catherine Rutland here, Clinical Director at Simply Health. Should we be worried about the rise in numbers of mouth cancer cases in the UK? And is there anything we can do to lower our risk? Yeah, we. I mean, we really should be worried. Um, it's, uh, as, as David says, it's a little known cancer that people don't, aren't aware of. So uh, don't check themselves regularly for. Um, and the numbers are on the rise. And sadly, as well, the the, the stage at which these cancers are being diagnosed is often quite later, quite further progressed, and therefore the diagnosis becomes very poor with them. So I think the big thing, as David says, is is be aware of what your mouth normally looks like. You know, we're all used to it for breast cancer, for prostate and so on. There's big awareness campaigns around that. But for this, this is something you can do at home. You might feel a little bit silly standing in front of the mirror, sticking your tongue out and looking at your cheeks and so on, getting your camera in there and having a look. But as David says, it can absolutely save your life. So you need to have a look at what you normally look like. Don't wait until there's a problem. Have a look, see what your mouth normally looks like. So you get used to it so that if something changes and you start to see any differences in your mouth you then go and get yourself checked out really really important to go and be seen early looking for those sort of early signs david says changes of white spots or red spots in your mouth um, ulcers that don't heal um, hoarseness in your voice all of these things go and then see a dentist or a gp go and see and be seen early and get it checked out so that you can be diagnosed at an early stage if there is something wrong and your prognosis is then much better yeah, so what you're saying is make sure you're checking regularly. You get yourself that sort of comparison so you know what you're like normally. And then if anything yeah. changes, then you can go and catch it nice and early. And you said that it was the spots, red spots, white spots, hoarseness in the voice. Was there something I've missed there as well? Uh, ulcers. So um, I don't want to panic everybody because ulcers is a very, very common thing. Um, and lots of ulcers, most ulcers will have no nothing sinister around them at all and will come and go. But if you've got an ulcer that lasts over three weeks, um, so if you're getting up towards the three week point with an ulcer that's not healing, make an appointment to be seen at that point and make sure you're seen and have it looked at. Um, healthcare professionals would much prefer to see you and say there's nothing wrong with you than for you to come later and it be poor prognosis. We, we really do want to see you and and get this um you know this awful disease when it goes to further stages um you know sorted and seen early if we can and improve your prognosis and if people do suspect that they might potentially have something that they're a little concerned about where should they go to get it checked out 
the ideal thing to do is call your dentist. If you've got a regular dentist and you go, you go and they know your, they'll know your mouth. They know what you normally look like. So first and foremost, get in with your dentist, but make sure you make it clear when you ring for that appointment. I know it can be a struggle at the moment sometimes to get access to dentists. Make sure when you ring them that you explain what you can see and why you're concerned about it. If you can't get into your dentist, go to your GP, um, but make sure that, that the, again, that you reiterate those messages that you've had a good look around your mouth, you've got something that really concerns you and you really do feel you need to be seen as soon as possible. And um, assuming there's going to be some sort of resources online or information online as well? Yes, absolutely. Best place to go to is mouthcancer.org. Um, fantastic uh, website that will give you lots and lots of information. As David says, it's also about support for families. It's understanding what, what is going through, what's going to happen, what the process will be to give as much support as possible. It's a little known cancer. People don't know what happens. And that adds hugely to the concern and worry if there is a diagnosis. Um, so go to that website, mouthcancer.org, um, and then lots and lots of information on there for anybody who has any concerns whatsoever. And and David, of course, uh, you lost your father this year, obviously quite recent as well. You said you're doing OK, but how have you found the support? I think that's been the, the, the best thing. Uh, you realise who your friends are and what support you, you know, uh, is about. But it's also the outside organa- organisations as well. Um, it makes such a difference just to be able to pick up the phone and speak to somebody um, and just get that support and and keep you going really and but you know also as a family we we, we gelled together as so we were quite a close family and it just made us you know we were spread out throughout the southwest you know mum and dad were based in bristol my sister was based in exeter um but it just brought us even more closer together because it meant you know because of lockdown we couldn't visit each other so we came up with different ways of doing it but the support outside is is immense you know if you know somebody who's going through it just you know, just be there for them. Just, you know, give them a text, give them a phone call, you know, drop around some flowers or chocolates on the doorstep and leave it as a surprise. Just anything, just so that people know that you are, you know, what you're going through is, and they're thinking of you too. Well, thank you guys. That's all all I'm going to need for now, but thank you so much. And I really appreciate you sharing your story, David. Thank you very much. Thank you.